So we're getting a heat pump. Can we DIY it? Stick with us and find out. Welcome to the Handyverse, where we approach home ownership mindfully and turn to DIY as a first resort, where our skills and knowledge allow it. We're getting a heat pump, and this one we're not going to DIY because we're going to leave this one to the professionals because it's really not our area of expertise, and that's the smart thing to do. However, we're going to make a couple of videos because going through this process, we learned a lot. We wanted to share the information with you. Some of the things we had to consider were learning about heat pumps, so choosing a system, choosing a contractor, and securing financing. So that's what this series of videos is going to be about. So we moved into this house a few years ago. We considered getting a heat pump at that time and we um, got several quotes and ultimately though we decided to not uh, pursue it. We, in the summer, probably like July, we got the idea in our head again and thought we should revisit this purchase. Um, so why a heat pump? A few different reasons. Um, temperature control, humidity control, and basic just quality of life. And in the last few years, it does seem to us that the summers have been getting hotter, uh, and especially the layout of our house, the bedrooms are basically in the attic. So this summer and last, it was really unbearable. And now with the little one, um, it just felt like the right time to do with the right, um, the right thing to do. And just before we started thinking about the heat pump again, you'll, you'll, you can see, we'll put a link, uh, we did a video about installing an air conditioner in our bedroom. Uh, which was a decent fix for the moment, but we quickly came to realize that it wasn't sufficient for anything other than that room, and it wasn't very good at controlling the humidity. So it wasn't a, a, a great fix, um, but it did the job for this summer. And then finally, why now? We kind of talked about some of our, you know, five-year plan, I suppose, about whether we'll stay in this house or not, and we think we will. So it's not going to necessarily lower, it's not gonna be cheaper overall to get a heat pump. It will lower our monthly costs, but we'll recoup the value over time, especially if we stay in the house. It likely wouldn't be worth it if we were to sell in a year or two. Uh, so with that in mind, we decided that, you know, this is the right time to revisit it. What is a heat pump? If you start reading about it, get down the weeds, it's really confusing, but basically what it is, it moves heat, it pumps heat around wherever you want it. <laughs> like a fridge, it doesn't generate heat, but in the winter, for instance, um, it'll pump the warm air from outside, and yes, there is warm air apparently outside even when it's cold, but bring it into your home, and vice versa in the summer, the warm air that's in your house, it'll pump it to the outside. So that is basically how a heat pump works. So secondly, the source, so there's kind of the way we saw it, like the air source, heat pumps, so there's air to air uh, heat pumps, which are the most common when people say heat pumps, they're probably talking about an air to air heat pump. And then there's air to water heat pumps, which are less common, they don't typically do cooling, and they are used um, in homes who use electric hot water baseboard heating. Then there's geothermal heat pumps, which are less common, you don't hear about them as much because they're super expensive and not practical for the average homeowner. And they basically move heat through um, water containing pipes buried in the ground. So in getting a heat pump, there's lots of different things to think about. So here are some considerations. For us, first we thought about the upfront costs, getting duct versus ductless, um, and the initial cost of installing each. And the second was um, maintenance. Like everything in your home, you have to maintain it if you want to maintain the longevity of the product. Second uh, was thinking about the layout of our home. Our home is uh, small, relatively small square footage wise and there's a lot of small um, segregated rooms and uh, a mini split probably wouldn't be ideal for our home. Uh, we probably need several units which is going to increase the cost significantly. Next, ductwork. We have ductwork, existing ductwork. Um, but what would it be good enough or um, would it need a lot of repair or upgrading to make it uh, energy efficient with the new system? But we do have it in place, so getting a ducted system is an option as opposed to trying to install all new ductwork, which is probably not feasible if you didn't have it already. So many of you have probably been to someone's home who has a mini split half on the ceiling and if you're sitting close to that unit, you may actually have noticed it's kind of chilly and a bit uncomfortable and it can be a little confusing. but it 
the reason that it's that way is uh, as compared to say we have an oil furnace and when it turns on it's hot and our cat just hangs out in front of that vent because it's so cozy warm. Unlike the mini split, the heat that's coming out of the unit is not as high of a heat. It is heating the home, it's higher than the temperature of your house, but it can feel cool to the skin. The ducted air to air source uh, heat pump units are quite large and again many people have probably have seen these. They sit outside and one consideration in, in selecting your unit is the noise pollution or output and you'll pay more for the quieter units so you have to factor that in um, to your cost as well. Time to do the actual install, although this is a short term problem, um, for some people it might be it could be quite disruptive to their lives so for us for instance um, when they're here doing the work it's going to be really noisy so actually we're going to leave the house for a week so that they can get the work done because um, the little one's not going to likely nap through all of that noise, a little bit of FOMO. Ductless mini split uh, units would be a quicker install as opposed to our ducted unit. If you live in Canada, you'll know that it gets quite cold here. Not as cold as maybe some people think it gets here, but it does get cold. And heat pumps don't work below a certain temperature. So you almost always need a backup source of heat. Heat pumps, um, while generally are more efficient and more cost effective over time, they may or may not actually lower your overall heating cooling cost your home, especially if you didn't have um, cooling costs before. So you, you likely heat your home um, where we live, but you may not have actually had air conditioning, but if you add that in, it might not actually lower your overall cost. So you have to consider that. Aesthetics, we mentioned um, about mini splits in the home and the units that can be quite large. Um, and so whether you consider them unseemly or, or, or do you, whether you consider those unsightly, um, aesthetics is a consideration if that's important to you. And last is heat pumps have different, they do have lifespans, they have to be replaced eventually. Different units have different lifespans and so you have to factor that in as well. And for us, um, the decision likely to stay in the home, we'll likely get our money back. But if we're going to sell, we would have to think about would we recoup that value and is it worth it? So we chose ducted, uh, a little bit of a no-brainer. We already have the existing duct work. Um, also, we mentioned we have a lot of small rooms, so we think it'll be more efficient than a whole bunch of little small uh, mini split units. And finally, the, our oil furnace will likely have to be replaced in a few years, and that's quite expensive. So this is not a bad time to make this switch over um, and upgrade. So our next decision was choosing the system we were going to do. Were we going to do a full replacement um, or do an add-on? So the full replacement that we went with uh, is a full electric replacement. So that means we're getting rid of the oil furnace and going with a heat pump that's electric only and uses the electric um, backup source of heat should we need it. We'll likely need it because it gets cold. Um, the other option was the add-on to the furnace, but we thought that was maybe kind of silly because like we said, the furnace will need to re be replaced in a few years anyways, but if it had been a brand new unit, we likely would have gone with an add-on. Uh, the other option is a bivalent uh, system, which uses gas or propane uh, burner to increase the temperature of the air when it comes in, so you do have a backup source of heat as well. Then you have to choose the size of the unit that you'll be using, so the air source ducted heat pump that we're going with, um, there's all different choices in terms of size and it's measured in tons. This is a little again out of our scope. This is the one you want to let your contractor uh, handle. There are a whole set of standards that the contractor should be using and applying when selecting the proper unit for your home because it considers things like size of your home, the ductwork itself, what unit you can handle, um, and also if you have too big of a unit, like it turns off and on a lot, and in the end actually, um, a larger a unit that's too big for your home can actually end up costing you more. Next you want to consider the efficiency of your unit and what you're willing to pay for. There's two energy efficiency uh, ratings. So the first is, let me see if I can get this right, the HSPF, which is the Heating Seasonal Performance Factor, which is how efficient it is in terms of heating your home. The second is the SEER, S-E-E-R, the Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, which is how efficient it is in terms of cooling your home. And the higher the rating, again, the more expensive it's going to be. This one you probably again want to ask your contractor about in terms of selecting your unit. Another consideration in choosing your unit is the, 
the noise that you can tolerate come from this unit. Um, and one thing, you might be able to tolerate a higher um, noise pollution depending where it's located. So you might want to ask your contractor about where they're actually going to place the unit because if it's on the side or sort of away from a neighbor or a place where you don't come in the home, you, you, it might be okay that it's a little noisier as opposed to, for us anyways, it's going to end up being like where we come into our home. Um, and we're pretty close to neighbors as well, so we don't want to be like the bad neighbor. Um, so we're going to choose a unit that's, you know, relatively quiet. Um, and so the noisier the unit, the more expensive, like we said. And... Awesome. No. The noisier the unit, <laughs> the less expensive. Um, and the, the noise output from these units are measured in decibels. The higher the decibels, the noisier. Okay, so we hope you learned something. Hope you found it informative. We know that we learned a lot um, when we decided to go ahead with this project. There's lots of diff th different things to consider and just really an understanding the unit, um, what it does and how it works. The next video, we're gonna talk about a few things. Um, financing, securing um, financing to pay for this thing because it is expensive. Um, potential rebates, um, choosing a contractor, and then how we st uh, struck a balance between efficiency versus cost. If you like this video, hit subscribe, um, hit like, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. No, over again. Decibels. Decibels? Decibels? <laughs> Decibels? Decibels? Decibels. <laughs> What's a decibel? I don't know. Decibels. Decibels? Decibels. Decibels. Okay.